Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to check out the previous videos in this series. But in today's video, we're going to be covering the basics of Terraform and how you can deploy a resource group in Jure. Let's get started. So first of all, what can we say about Terraform? What is Terraform? Terraform is an infrastructure as code language. And what it allows you to do is if you saw the previous video on the key vault creation in Azure, it basically allows you to automate that process of going through the portal and clicking all those links. So if we go back here, for example, and we have a look at this key vault, which has keys, it has secrets and it has certificates. It automates the creation of this key vault. It automates the creation of all these environment variables that are here in a way that is automated. So it's a really, really powerful thing because just say you have a dev environment, say you have a test environment, say you have a staging environment, say you have a uh, production environment, you can automate the process of deploying all of those environments with the exact same configuration easily. And you can do it for your local users as well. It's really, really powerful and it, it allows you to do th these things really, really quickly. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go through what Terraform does. So I have got Terraform here and you can have the required providers that you're going to be using. So for example, I know I'm going to be using Azure RM and I might use random, which allows you to create things like random GUIDs if you need to use GUIDs for anything. So Azure RM is a provider that allows you to deploy Azure resources. So if you go into Terraform documentation, you can see there's all of these different things that you can use in order to deploy things in Azure. So if I search for Azure Key Vault, for example, you can see that it has the details on what it is that you need in order to do the Azure Key Vault deployment. As you can see here though, if you have a look at this details here, all this configuration is stuff that we were doing in the portal, but it is just in code form. So here we've got our access policy, for example, but we didn't use an access policy, we used RBAC. So we are gonna be using slightly different configuration to what's in this example here, but we can use the documentation to help us get our example right. So I'm just gonna put this here because it's gonna be really, really useful for us in, in future. And then I'm just gonna put this here as well. And I'm just gonna make it slightly smaller so that we can have a look at that. So the next thing we do is we specify that we wanna use that provider. And in here, if we wanted to, we could add features. So if you look here, for example, it says that the key vault block supports the following purge softly on destroy. Should the key vault resource be permanently deleted when destroyed and that defaults to true. Or as you can set that to false if you wanna make sure that it doesn't. And similarly, you can do the same thing for purge soft delete certificates and destroy. You can set that to false. If you want to protect any specific thing, bear in mind when you do this, it can cause a little bit of problems with Terraform. So when you try and redeploy it, just bear in mind with that when you do add this, you, you really need to protect the Terraform state. And now we're talking about Terraform state. What is Terraform state? Terraform state is a way of detecting whether or not resources that you previously deployed are with your deployment or whether they're with someone else's deployment. Say I deploy Jade Wilson resource group and I've done that through Terraform. And I know that if I do a apply that I don't need to reapply. I've already made that change. Or if I want to destroy it, I know that I want to destroy it. However, if I created that in the portal, I don't want to destroy that through my Terraform because it's nothing to do with my Terraform unless I import that into state. Again, that's another thing that we need to think about. So you can specify the provider that you want to do. And so once you've found your required providers and specified your providers, you can then create a resource in there. So the first thing that we're going to do just for this video is we're just going to create a resource group rather than create the key vault in here as well. So we can create a, a resource group and, and you can see here it does a genre resource group. And I'm just going to change this to be my key vault sample. And then we're going to just give it a name and I'm going to change this to UK cell. 
One thing that might be worth doing as well is you can add things like variables and you can switch these out to variables as well. So we can go through that again in another lesson. But for now, we're just going to have them hard coded just to get the full concept there. Having variables is really, really useful when you want to be able to have multiple environments. So say you want test or dev, and then you can have the prefix here. You can have like this as a prefix or something, and then you can have dash dev or dash test or dash prod, for example, at the end of it. So that's done. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you that this can do, be deployed. I don't know why that's there. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do an AZ login, which is we've already installed the Azure CLI. So when you deploy resources to ter from Terraform to Azure, you need to be logged in as that user. And what that's going to do is that's going to open up a browser which allows you to log in. So I'm just going to select the user that I want to log in as, and I'm just going to log in there. So I'm just going to do this off screen because I don't want people to have a look at my credentials. So that's logged me in. Okay, I need to specify the tenant as well. So for example, this user knows the tenant, but my Jade Code user doesn't. So I need to specify the tenant that they're going to be working on. So this is the default tenant for, 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 for this, but because that doesn't have a portal in Azure, I need to be using this tenant. So I'm just going to switch to using that. And you can just get that here basically as well. You can just get the directory ID, but for the tenant that you want to use, and instead of just doing AZ login, you can do dash dash tenant and specify the tenant that you want to be working on. So you can get the tenant here and you can also have a look if you go into switch directory at the list of available tenants here as well. So now I've selected the tenant, I should be able to then log in as that tenant. So now it's asking me to select a subscription and yeah, I want to be using the second subscription. So I'm just going to press two and then select that subscription. So now I've got that subscription selected. Always make sure that you're selecting the right subscription because if you don't, then it's going to be using the, the wrong one. And if you want to have a look at the subscriptions that you've got, you can have a look here and just make sure that the ID of the one that you want to use, which one it is. So now we've selected our subscription. We should be able to do a um, ter Terraform initialize and um, then a Terraform pl a pl plan and apply. So if you want to do a Terraform initialize, all you need to do is do Terraform. Let me go into the Terraform folder. And then Terraform. And what this is going to do is this is going to look at all the providers that you specified. And then it's going to make a like little directory here. And it's going to pull those providers there so that you can then use those providers locally and then push your changes to the providers that you're working with. So now what we can do is we can do a Terraform plan. And in this Terraform plan, what we should see is it wants to create a one resource. It wants to create the resource group, which in theory is still classed as a resource in, Ter in Terraform, but it's a resource group. It, it contains resources in Azure. And that can be a little bit confusing because you've got resources in Terraform and then you've got resources in Azure and they are different things. So you can see here, it's just saying, I want to create this resource group. So all you need to do now is do a Terraform apply. And then what it's going to do is it's going to give you that plan again. And then it's going to ask you if you want to add that plan. So you can see here, do you want Terraform to provide these actions? And if you go, yes, it's going to then create that action in Azure. Great. So now you can see that that's been added. And if I go to my resource groups here, you can see that that's been added there. So you can see that that name there is CICD Keyball. You can see that it's been pushed to UK South. You can see it's in the subscription that we logged into. And that's all there. And so now we can then use this resource group to add resources to. So we can add our Keyball in there. We can add our key and that will be what we can add in there. We also need to assign a role for my current users as well, because just because I'm an owner of this subscription doesn't mean 
that I have access to view the keys. Like we saw in the portal, I have to actually go in and assign myself the administrator role to be able to create keys. And then I also can assign my user different roles to be able to view those keys as well. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.